On May 23rd, 2023, Apple released Logic Pro for iPad and melted the internet in the process. Logic Pro on the iPad. Logic Pro for iPad. Logic Pro for the iPad Pro. This is Logic Pro for the iPad. Logic Pro for iPad. Logic Pro for the iPad. Logic Pro for the iPad. Logic on iOS. Logic is here and it's unbelievable. Logic Pro on iPad. Logic Pro. Logic Pro. For the iPad. In this video, I'll take a look back at the last 12 months since Logic's release and see what's changed. It all started with this tweet. On April 22nd, 2020, prolific Apple leaker and YouTuber John Prosser tweeted, I am now 100% confident that Final Cut Pro, Logic Pro and Xcode are coming to iPad Pro. I cannot confidently say to what capacity or with what limitations due to RAM management, but it's happening within the next year or so. Cue everybody being glued to WWDC that year, only for Apple to announce nothing. Same the year after and the year after that. To the point where some people thought it was just off the cards completely. Every year or so someone comes out and says, oh, the, Mac, the touchscreen Mac is coming next year. And I've been hearing that for five years now and it's not coming. And I honestly don't think, I think it's got about as much chance of coming as Logic Pro does to come to iOS personally. Oh, but wow, really? Uh, hot take, right? It's not coming, people. Let, just, just stop. Just leave it. It's not coming. There will be no Logic Pro on iOS and there will be no touchscreen on a MacBook. All right, there you go. You can cut that bit. So in cut a year's that, time, when that, yeah. both of those things are available, you can come back and say John doesn't know what he's talking about. Then out of the blue on May 9th, 2023, Apple announced that Logic Pro was coming to the iPad. And on the 23rd of the same month, they released it. And it was good. Really good. A touch-based interface built from the ground up for the iPad over a hundred stock instruments and effects, never before seen tools like Sample Alchemy and Beat Breaker alongside Logic Pro mainstays like the Quick Sampler, Drum Machine Designer and Alchemy. A surprising lack of MIDI Learn. A fully featured mixer complete with channel strips, volume faders, pan controls, plugins, sends and automation, plus round trip compatibility so you can easily move projects between Logic on Mac and Logic on iPad, and a subscription pricing model that was understandably a huge sticking point for a lot of people. And I totally get it, everything is a subscription nowadays, from the TV you watch, to the music you listen to, to having your car drive itself around. However, personally, and by personally I mean my opinion, why am I doing this? I think that paying Apple $5 a month to use Logic is much better than the alternative. Like, how much do you think Logic would cost as a one-time App Store download? $150? $200? That's just prohibitively expensive for the iOS app market, and it would limit the amount of people who could use the app. A $5 a month subscription lowers the barrier of entry and makes sure practically anyone with a compatible iPad can make use of this incredible music production software. I can already imagine the state of the comment section after me saying that, so I'll leave the subscription chat there. Apple have made it clear that it's here to stay. It is what it is, I guess. With all that said, Logic was by no means perfect at launch. Apple didn't really do a good job of setting expectations before launch, hyping up Logic for iPad as a fully iPad-only based equal alternative to the desktop version, which, as it turns out, just wasn't the case. I actually asked the Logic Pro for iPad community on Facebook what features they would like to see in Logic Pro for iPad a few months after that initial launch, and they didn't hold back. With everything from UI contrast to a score editor and, unsurprisingly, MIDI Learn being suggested. Since then, Logic Pro for iPad has received one small update, which was a single Alchemy specific fix and no MIDI Learn, multiple content updates in the form of sound and producer pack releases, and one bigger update in the form of Logic Pro 1.1. 
This new update added a fantastic built-in mastering assistant to Logic, a new sound pack, and a massive list of bug fixes and quality of life improvements. Version 1.1 is where I think Logic Pro for iPad really came into its own, by the way. Apple did a lot to fix some of the janky UI stuff and bugs that really irritated users of that release version. And just a few weeks ago, Apple released a massive update and full-on version change to Logic Pro for iPad 2. New AI-powered session players and a chord track for them to play along with. Two excellent studio instrument plugins. Chromaglow, a new saturation plugin. On-device AI-powered stem separation with stem splitter. And another huge list of bug fixes and improvements. Which brings us bang up to day, and one year on, Logic Pro for iPad is without question one of the DAW options on iPad. Look, personally, for me, Logic is the best DAW available on the iPad right now. The workflow, the plugins, the instruments, it all just clicked for me immediately. And all the improvements and features Apple have added since launch means it still absolutely suits me perfectly. It might not do it for you, and that's totally fine too. I love that the iOS music production scene has got to the point where there are so many amazing options for music makers out there that there just isn't one de facto best option for everyone. As for the future of Logic Pro for iPad, who knows? Well, I mean, hopefully MIDI learn at some point, right? But apart from that, I think we'll see more AI session instruments. I know Pete Johns has his fingers crossed for a session guitarist at some point, and I definitely agree with that. More fancy new plugins, maybe, to go along with Chroma Verb and Chroma Glow. Chroma Press or Chroma Q or something? And while I love that Logic Pro for iPad is its own self-contained thing, I hope some features from the Mac version make their way across at some point. Flex pitch, crossfading, and a score editor would all be really powerful additions, and they're all features that the Logic Pro for iPad community have been crying out for for months. So that is Logic Pro for iPad one year later. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about the app 12 months on, and if you got yourself a year subscription, will you be renewing it? Give that like button a slap if you enjoyed watching this. I really appreciate it, and it helps more people see this video. And for a rundown of everything Apple managed to cram into the latest Logic Pro for iPad update, 